Now, I'm just going to manually add it. I'm not going to do it through the command prompt. Um, you can if you want to. It's up to you. It's uh, located in your tools, x86, um, right here. Now, the location of where you place it is up to you. I generally place it just in the root, so right here. And this is also where I'll put my scripts. Um, I have some examples down here. Let me pull a couple of them up. Um, here's a map script. Let's say you want to access a uh, network drive. You want to mount a drive. Um, as you can see from here, we use the net use command. And we'll specify a drive letter, the IP, the UNC path. Um, what if you need, if it's on a domain and you need a username and password, you'll need to add those arguments. But you just save it as a bat or a CMD file and throw it in the root here and you can easily run them from WinPE. Um, what's another one we, uh, we use? Um, a disk format. You can uh, get one to format your disks automatically. You'll need two files for that. You'll need a batch file and a text file. Um, as you can see here, you'll have to run disk part with a slash s command which specifies the script. Um, which runs this, selects the disk, it cleans it, creates a partition, makes it active, and assigns it a default letter, normally C if there's no other drive. And then you'll add the format command to format the drive, so you can uh, install Windows on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, add PuTTY in here for a uh, application. Um, and uh, again, just put your batch files here. Okay, so now that we have uh, our image customized, what we're going to do is we're going to unmount it. We're going to put it back in its uh, original format of uh, WIM. Now to do this, this is a pretty simple command. It's just DISM slash unmount dash WIM slash mount directory or DIR when uh, this will be the location of the of the mount folder and uh, one thing I have noticed um, I believe if you have the mount folder open when you try to unmount it you'll get errors so make sure you close out of it um, when PE X, oops when PE x86 slash mount and then we're gonna add there's uh, two arguments you could use here. There's a commit and uh, discard. Um, when you want to save your changes, you just do slash commit. If you've done something to your uh, extracted mount, um, you can always discard it by using the slash discard. But obviously we want to save, so we're going to commit it. Oh, there we go. Save the image. Now it's unmounting. Now let's navigate back to our C drive or our mount location and you notice that the mount folder will be empty. Now it resaved it oops it resaved it to your sources boot. Now you'll notice that this is actually bigger now it's 1.17 117 megs whereas our default WinPE was 111. That's because you know we've added software and a package and drivers and whatnot. Now we're gonna move on to mounting uh, I'm sorry, not mounting. Well, mounting onto some sort of media. Now, if you're going to put uh, WinPE on a flash drive, um, you basically need to format the drive uh, in the proper way. And uh, I'll include a script here, and I'll uh, include links for all these scripts um, for anyone that wants to use them. But uh, here's a script that you will need to format with. Um, you'll need to run disk part select the disk, do the clean command, create partition primary, select partition 1, make it active, then format it uh, with FAT32, then assign, um, which will just assign the next letter, and then exit that. And then you can just um, copy everything in the ISO folder. You can just copy that directly onto your flash drive. Don't put it in a folder or anything, but just copy these four 
uh, one file and three folders directly onto your flash drive and you should be able to boot to it. Now older machines sometimes have trouble booting and you'll need to go into your boot options and select uh, the flash drive. It won't automatically pick it up I don't think. Um, you can also burn these onto a CD or uh, the toolkit actually comes with an op uh, a way to make an ISO. Uh, to do that we'll do uh, OSCD IMG and then dash N dash B when PE we're gonna specify the uh, com file which is very important ETFS boot dot com which you should have by default it was uh, one of the original files copied specify that plus the ISO folder plus the name of the image. So we're just going to make it WinPE x86. Uh, we'll call it WinPE x86.iso. And there we go. Now you have an ISO and you can uh, open it and your files will be right there. That's just if you want an ISO. You can also just burn the, the files here onto a CD if you want. Um, that's uh, WinPE in a nutshell. Hope this helped.